Hey, this is Brian from Lucero, and you're listening to Rock Paper Podcast. Rock Paper Podcast. This is beat paper, paper covers rock. Rock beats is the shame, covers nonstop, never know what. New kind of guests that he's got coming at you. Live and direct on the spot could be rock, folk, country, or hip-hop, jazz. All kind of folks that he has could be an artist or a comedian to make you laugh on the Rock Paper Podcast. Double deck of fudge round, rolling round town Shane coming at you live and direct from ground zero He's your hero, he's your bestie Rock Paper Podcast with Shane Presley Rock Paper Podcast Hey everybody, Shane Presley here, Rock Paper Podcast Coming to you from St. Louis, Missouri Hanging out tonight on Zoom with Brian Venable. Welcome to the show. <laughs> how, how you doing? I'm good, man. Uh, thank you for doing this. This is oh, very yeah. cool. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, big shout out to a mutual friend, Brad Jackson, kind of helping uh, connect the dots on this one. Oh, yeah. Um, and reminded me at least three times that I had to do this tonight. <laughs> Don't laugh. I forgot and remembered yeah. a whole lot. So, all right. Well, I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad you remembered and uh, we made it happen tonight, man. So, uh, thank you again. Uh, this is cool. I'm. Uh, I'm. I've been a, a big Lucero fan for a long time. So this is a real treat to sit and talk. Uh, especially the uh, as we are recording this. This is the night before the That's the new it. album comes out, which is uh, it's crazy to think about. It's exciting, That's, man. It's weird. It's like. When I was joking about forgetting and remembering, it's basically time has become a, an illusion the last 10 months. Right. And so for me, it's like, we recorded a record during this. Like we were safe and we went in, but I don't, it's not that I don't remember recording it, but yeah, there's this mystery record coming out tomorrow that I'm all like, <laughs> when did that happen? Yeah. About right. Like eight years ago. <laughs> Yeah, man, that's uh, this has been a wild uh, whirlwind of a year, uh, twenty twenty, and then uh, you know, kicking off twenty one already. Like it's just, uh, it's been strange because like, we, me and uh, Brad were actually kind of having a similar conversation the other night, just about how like, it's it, it seemed like forever, but it also seemed like the shortest amount, uh, shortest year ever too. Like it's just like weird how how everything happened, but. Um, but yeah, you guys got, we got a brand new Lucero record yeah. coming out January 29th. And, uh, I can't wait to give this uh, a proper listen, man. I've been, you guys did a uh, sneak peek, um, three singles out there, uh, yeah. digitally and, and, uh, I've been just, they've been on repeat this week, man. I was Hell getting, yeah. I've been having a lot of fun with those. So, but, uh, I don't know. I'd, I'd like to, while I got you here, I'd, I think it'd be fun to uh, get to know a little bit more about you. And um, I guess, are you uh, at your home right now recording this? Uh? Yeah, I'm in the, it's been many things. And now yeah. we call it the library because there's, I can't see, like where those paintings, I hang the paintings when I'm done with them to dry. But that whole wall is books. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> um if you look that away, which right. you can't, there's another bookshelf in a closet, and then there's another. So there's three walls of books. But what we're here is, since we've been down, is I've created my digital audio workstation. So, but yeah, so this is the music room now. Yeah. And where and where is that at? Where's your what city are you in? Oh, I'm in Memphis, Tennessee. All right. Yeah. Very cool, man. And uh, so I guess and uh, you did all those paintings you said. Yeah, no, about, I guess it's 2017 now, or maybe 2016. I keep thinking it's been a year, but it's been a couple of years. I uh, started painting. I was like, I wanted a painting for the porch. And then I was like, $500, that's ridiculous. I'll paint my own. And it became very cathartic. It's almost like I play guitar and I make music, but my true, not passion necessarily, but how I expel things from me and create seems to be coming from this paintings kind of yeah, and so nice. yeah i've had a few art shows uh mostly i put them up on the instagrams and i have a website and stuff but it's kind of a ghost ship right now but yeah i just i have a art studio like i was married and had two stepdaughters and when we got divorced they left so the whole back part of the house 
is an art studio. I'm putting in a dark room, and that's where roommate David lives. Not in the dark room. He has his own room. <laughs> but um, And this, the library, as we call it, has kind of just turned into the uh, studio or music room or whatever yeah, you man. want to call it. I do, I do find that interesting, though, with art. We like, you know, especially um, for musicians in particular, like uh, I get to talk to a lot of them. And I love like kind of, you, you know, you kind of know them in one light as like, obviously people know you as a guitarist, but yeah. they discover that you do, you know, all these paintings and there's, you know, there's obviously all of us have very, you know, like multiple, you know, things that we're into and everything, but it's just like kind of people just assume sometimes that that's like, that's the crazy part. Yeah. Like Lucero, we've joked about it and you read all this stuff. It wasn't necessarily, it wasn't a joke, but we just didn't think. I had a list, like, learn to paint, learn to play guitar. You know, like, technically, I was writing poetry and hopping trains and buses, and that was my thing was, like, I, you know, and I'm still working on a book of poetry for the last four years trying to get it done. But, yeah, I don't – I'm the guitar player in Lucero, but I'm not necessarily a guitarist. Like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, that's the sure. thing is, like, I was never, like, under the covers trying to learn – Van Halen songs or whatever. I'm just a punk rock kid. And then the punk rock aspect of it is, is it's like, you just pick it up and go. Like when we started Lucero, I knew seven Lucero songs and um, that's it. And as we learned, you know, like I didn't know how to play guitar. I knew how to play seven Lucero songs on guitar, you know? And it's like what I was saying before, how all this recording, I don't know how to punch in. But I've made 90 pieces of music in the last 10 months. You know, like if I mess up, we got to start all over. And I've skipped like four steps, but I'm making music. And that was with Lucera. It was like, man, you get up there, put your fingers there. And I've grown into a guitar player. But like in the last two or three weeks, I set up the drum set. I've been learning drums. All right. Like I started doing kind of beats on the drum machines and wanted to like supplement them to make them bigger on recording. And all of a sudden it's like kick, snare, kick, snare, kick, snare, kick, snare, hi-hat, kick. Snare. You know, I'm like, Oh, it's patterns. And I just, all I really want to do is hip hop beats. So it's not like trying to be John Bonham or nothing. So it's pretty simple, but yeah, like I play guitar in Lucero, but I want to create, you know what I mean? Right. Like whether it's the gardening, whether it's the painting, whether it's poetry, whether it's anything. And so, mm -hmm. It just happens to be, for me spe specifically, not every, you know, there's some people that are like, I want to play rock and roll guitar. Or I want to be the biggest rock star in the entire world. And I'm all like, I like to travel. I, I Again, it wasn't necessarily supposed to go this far. You know, I'm glad it did. And it's awesome. And I think that was part of our charm or Dumb luck, if nothing else, is Ben was a bass player in a pop punk band, and I'd never played guitar before. So when we started, that was always the joke, is we made one half-assed guitar player, you know. So, um, yeah, the painting for me is just kind of, yeah, it's just another, it's cathartic. It, you know, I have a style now. Like, that's the same to me as with Lucero is, a lot of Lucero, the Lucero sound for me is I just didn't know where the next note would be or I had to figure out a way to do it. And if you do it long enough, they're like, oh, put the Lucero guitar on it, you know. And it's the same with the painting to me is I don't know what I was trying all kinds of different stuff. And now I have these figures and these demon types. It's kind of like a like I'm a child of Basquiat and Herring and all that New York downtown style. And so I tell my stories through these rep, you know, you look at them, you're like, they're just stick figures. And then their eyes, there used to be demons. And then I just got rid of the demon part and made them eyes. There ain't a lot to it, but it's like folk songs or old country, you know, like it's, it's a powerful imagery when done with the titles to mm -hmm. me. And so, um, so yeah, yeah. I, and it changes and, and grows and does things, but yeah, man. So you, uh, you mentioned like the early, uh, the start of Lucero. And I was kind of wondering about that, like how, because 
I think like, I know you, you tapped into a little bit of like the, you didn't really know you were just this punk rock kid. Didn't really know a lot of guitar and like, but I feel like the kind of the, the fun of what uh, Lucero has become over the last, uh, you know, several years is that uh, there it's a little everything in there. There's, you know, you got, uh, you got some of that punk rock, you got some just like other rock influence. You got some soul stuff comes out. You got, you know, a little bit of everything kind of mixed up and to, to create that sound. And, uh, and that's why I, the records are so good because they're, they're very kind of a uh, eclectic uh, sounds that come through. I there. think that's in the early days, it was like, you wanted to be not tough, but cool. But you're like, yeah, it's Tom Waits and the replacements and the pogues and they're all great, but that's, you know, like, ah, ah. and then as you grow into, I mean, we come April, it'll be 23 years, which is right. nuts. Yeah. But there's some point where you're just like, you know, who else is cool? Huey Lewis and the news, Hell yeah. you know, and you're just, but that's like when you're in your twenties, you're like, you're not going to brag about that. You're going to be like, no, it's if you, you know, and, uh, and I think that's where like this new record, it's, you know, Ben's up in Ohio, just fully immersed in the 80s album oriented, you know, like Miami Vice, strange, like he is hearing some 80s, his, he is a fan of post Eagles solo projects. And All right. A lot of people, you know, that's a woof, you know, but he is down. All she wants to do is dance. Yeah. You know? And he'll talk about like Warren Zeon has all those weird story songs and everything. But, but yeah, so. After a while, you know, like we've not, we are a popular band. We're not necessarily famous. We have fans, you know, but we got kicked around a whole lot in the beginning. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like we were not cool. <laughs> like there's always somebody cooler or somebody better, you know. And after a while, you kind of hit that whole like, fuck else are they going to do? You know, like, <laughs> yeah, we're going to put fucking horns on the record. Yeah. They called it ska, like most people. <laughs> and you're just like, well, your spear of reference has to be as big as a marble if you think that's ska. Like, do you not know about R&B? Do you not know about Drive Like Jehu? Do you not know about, I mean, Leonard Skinner, Alice sure. Cooper, those bands, if you listen to their studio albums, horns all over them. You'd have thought we killed somebody's baby. <laughs> you know what I mean? When we put horns on it. And it's just like, what do you listen to? Where, you know, like... I think we're a little older, so we might have dug back deeper. But, but yeah, like that's the thing. And then you wrap all that up in the we only can play to the the level of our abilities. So it's like, you know, like I'm, we might want to be David Bowie. We don't know how to play like David Bowie. <laughs> you know, you punt from midfield and just whatever you get is loose arrow. And I yeah. think that's the thing is like, our country records sound like Lucero. The R and B records sound like Lucero. This Stranger Things, Miami Vice kind of thing we're going sounds like Lucero. You know? Yeah. No, I. I mean, but again, that's. I think that like. It's definitely what makes me a fan. It's how I like listening to my records. I love uh, having a lot of different sounds coming through, and I'm sure that's why you guys have had the longevity that you've had. That people like it because they're never know what it's going to be next it's always but it's always going to be lucero sound you know so uh, and it's always funny because they always complain <laughs> and then six months later they love it yeah you know like nobody liked rick when we put rick on the records they were like y'all sound like doors rick <laughs> and now it's like rick's the greatest thing since sliced bread yeah i think horn. that i think it is something there is as fans i think people people are just get attached to well, we, what they first loved yeah, and that's the other thing that we're also having to deal with is that we're not whiskey. I mean, Ben drinks whiskey. There's whiskey is dry. I've been sober whoosh, nine years now. Golly. Um, we're not the, like, fall down, drunk, whiskey, rock and roll, or honky-tonk band as much anymore. Right. But if you're 38 years old, when you were in high senior in high school, that's what, you know, like – and so that's the thing is like, we're always going to have that rough and tumble, you know, and I'm like, I don't know. Some days you want to be legitimate. Some days you're like, no, we're going to be like Jason Isbell or somebody. We're going to we'll we're going to be classy. And then really it's like, I don't know that we can be classy. You sure. know, I mean, we, 
Japan, but, um, but yeah, that's the beauty is like, depending on where you found us in time is what you, you know, and that's, I mean, that's with any bands really, but yeah, I, I definitely find, um, as a, as a fan of music, like there's uh well, like Isabel, you mentioned, like, like for me, um, I really attached to myself to his uh, Southeastern record, uh, which I, I think is a fantastic album, but like, it's hard for me to like, I still listen to the newer stuff, but like, it's hard for me to like l appreciate it as much as I love that record because that's where hey, I was man. first. He's the new kid guitar player in drive by truckers that has two really good songs. Yeah. <laughs> that's, right. You know what I mean? Like, that's the funny part for us. We're like, man, you know, like that's, you know, he somehow to get back to me. But as far as I'm concerned, those were the like he wrote those. He's like Orson Welles. He wrote two of the greatest, three of the greatest songs ever. Yeah. And then now has a 20 year career. You know, where I'm like, I didn't like anything after that. It yeah. wasn't bad. I just was like, it ain't outfit. It ain't right. lonely love. Or it ain't what you know, like that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah, that's where. We were like, oh, there's that new couple that are playing with that hot shit guitar player kid, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, which is, yeah. I mean, he's built an entire career. And there's people out there like me that are going to be like, oh, I loved you in the truckers. Yeah, sure. <laughs> he's just like, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, I say we drop in a tune, man. I've been so, uh, I mentioned uh, the new record is coming out January 29th. When You Found Me, uh, be available worldwide. And, uh, but man, you guys leaked a couple of these songs out. And uh, Back to Ohio has definitely uh, been a, a turner upper for me, man. I've been, it's been on repeat uh, all week. And I've been, mean, it's just, uh, it's a lot of fun to sing along to. That hook uh, is, is just classic Damn. feel to it, man. Hell yeah. Wait. 
Uh, and of course, uh, we mentioned in uh, horns and stuff on it, like, I feel like uh, it's got this like big, uh, you know, like Clarence Clemens kind of sex he solo. Jim Spake into the studio. And yeah. He's only on that one little bit. But it was like, you know what this needs? Jim Spake. Yeah. You know? But that's that's a, a totally kind of like, you know, threw back to like a Springsteen type of rock and roll and tune. And like an 80 Springsteen too. That's right. The, it fits in with everything. But it sounded so good, man. Yeah. What do you want to uh, tell us about Back to Ohio? Anything come um, to mind? It's kind of, I guess, I didn't know anything about it. Ben, I, I don't know where it started from, but basically there's like a PBS or something like they do these PBS America shows. And the guy's, he's not famous, but it's like he ran away from home, became a circus guy, sword swaller, you know, was part of the invasion of Cuba. Just if you see this guy's life, you're like, what in the holiest of this is going on, you know? And I think people, from what I've heard, is like Ben's brother makes movies and Jeff Nichols wanted to get involved. And I don't know if Ben found it through Jeff or Jeff found it through Ben. And then at some point I'd heard stories like George Clooney optioned it and all these people like, I think there's going to be a movie about it. But basically for me, you take the most quiet riot sounding anthemic, you know, um, whatever cheap trick sounding song. And there's just a huge history lesson, you know? So, uh, but yeah, he was from Ohio and Ben's moved to Ohio. He's been living there for a couple of years now. Yeah. And so, I actually uh, heard heard Ben talking uh, uh, last night with uh, my buddy Chris on um, We Are Live. He did a little a, a show last night, a live stream, and and he was uh, sharing a lot of those what you just said, those stories. And I had no idea that was like a this was based on a true story, and I didn't I didn't know anything about this guy until hearing Ben yeah. talk about it. So that's, well, that's pretty wild. Is, it's just been you know like. Ben had that bike riders book and you know, Ben likes Cormac McCarthy, that one of whatever the, the solo album. And, um, and it's the same as this. He just, you know, he reads a different, he reads different than I do. And so it's a lot of history and story based stuff. Mm -hmm. So, but he finds these crazy. And again, I don't know if his brother found it, but I mean, the guy's life was made for some crazy, you know, movie. Yeah ended tragically and all that kind of stuff so um, yeah with the uh, firing squad right and then what they were saying like hey, you know what you throw over a country <laughs> shit happens i guess you know <laughs> uh if you learn anything from this show you know that's right there watch your back if you start overthrowing the country <laughs> yeah. oh you're gonna get on a list we're both gonna get on a list for that <laughs> uh but yeah man this uh uh it was, it was such a fun man and i really like Again, as uh, as I'm listening to it, I just uh, where I go is to the live show, and I'm I'm thinking about you guys cranking this one up, and uh, and just it's going to be a ton of fun to to see you guys playing it on a stage somewhere soon. So, um, and that that's one thing I definitely can't wait for. I definitely yeah. uh, here in St. Louis we have off Broadway, and it's just uh, it's always fun to get routed with you guys. Can in we there. play that anymore? Last time we played two nights. Yeah. We have, I have some off Broadway stories that are ridiculous. Yeah. That is one of the, yeah. Anything Man. you can, anything you can uh, share with us without getting anybody in trouble? Oh, no. I mean, it's totally shareable. It's insane. <laughs> yeah. Your city's nuts. No. Um, we've never had to preface this off Broadway story. Mm -hmm. We have to go back a little bit. All right. We've never had any luck in St. Louis until off Broadway. Right. Okay. We've played the creepy crawl in both locations. We played Mississippi Nights, and that is that a mm -hmm. yeah, like where Uncle Tupelo supposedly played or something. Some, you know, we've played the Rocket Bar, maybe or the Comet. There's something like if we played it, it closed like the next week, you know, and it's usually historic. Um, we've played some places that were under construction that probably didn't even make it past our show. We quit playing St. Louis. The two cities we quit playing were New Orleans and St. Louis forever. We just we'd go to Baton Rouge. It was great, you know. And then we'd um oh I forgot where we'd go. We'd go to Kansas City, and we you know so it was just one of those like we couldn't draw flies in St. Louis. So we show up that first night at Off Broadway. I feel like it was the first night with Black Joe Lewis. Maybe like we had done half the tour with Titus Andronicus. 
And this was the beginning with Black Joe Lewis. Why that's pertinent? Probably not. I just remembered it that way. Um, so, stage, us, batshit crazy St. Louis people. Um, these two women start fighting, like fighting, hair. Um, and we're just kind of like, I don't know. The bar has been rearranged the last time we were there. Right. But I don't know if you remember, it used to run along the whole sidewall maybe or most of it. And so they're just, I mean, we're like, hello, we're Lucero. Derm, 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 derm. Like we had, this wasn't like well into the set. This was four minutes into the set. <laughs> they're beating the snot out of each other. And this one woman breaks a beer bottle and she's about to go for this other lady. Break, it's like roadhouse. Right. And the bartender guy can't get to it. He has to leave. He physically leapt off the bar across that little, like, Superman kind of to get into it. And they separated him. They kicked him out and everything. And after the show, there was like a big chunk of hair on the floor. And I was, I snatched it up and I carried it around in my guitar case for like a year. Uh. I got into Canada and back. That means they didn't look or nothing. If you got loose hair, like eventually uh, a haircutting lady told me that it was a weave. Like it wasn't because I was just like, there's no blood. There's no scalp. This is, and I rolled it up in a little bag, sandwich baggie. So it looked real suspect. I had, <laughs> you know, dirty show hair. My, you know, but that was like, oh, okay. Well, hello, St. Louis. You know, thank you for coming out. Yeah. And ever since then, the, you know, we've played a few other random spots, I feel like. Um, but yeah, off Broadway, we just we just burn it down. That, you know? that, that sounds uh like the perfect story to to, <laughs> to describe those nights, man. That's uh man, I'm just like, saying this. And again, we were shocked. We couldn't, you know, we and then that neighborhood, I don't know if that antiques district had been there all along, but when we first started playing off Broadway, there wouldn't. There's an Irish pub, what looks like a prison, but I think it's a brewery and yeah. nothing else, you know? Right. I don't yeah. even know they deliver pizza to the place or something. It was <laughs> crazy. So. I work uh, uh, for about four years. I worked up the street at uh, Broadway Oyster Bar. And uh, and uh, so a lot of those, um, your your story about that fight and everything is took me right back to working the door there. Uh, she broke so. a bottle. Who does that? Yeah. I right. mean, there's scrapping, but then it's like, you could have cut your hand. Nobody like yeah. that's the movie shit. Oh yeah, but she broke it good. Yeah, we, I've seen it all, man. Working that, working up there, and but it's yeah, I, it was uh, but I got to see all sorts of great music too, and we we had a lot of fun nights, man. But there's there's nights when you got to deal with something like that, and it's just like, man, this. I is, mean, we dealt with it in a bunch of different places. That just particular was like, yeah, that stage is not tall, and that no. was they were right there about to sure going at it, so. Yeah, man, <laughs> that's that's crazy stuff. That uh, what is uh besides off Broadway? Do you uh, what's one of your other? Uh, do you have any other favorite things to do while in St. Louis? Is there uh, any uh, particular? Do you get to do you get to like take a take a uh, trip around the city or do any kind of I fun stuff? A, I was seeing a lady that lived there, so sometimes she'd carry me around town. But really, discovering the antique, I've. There's that record store that's only open 10 minutes a week, it seems like. <laughs> and finally, after like eight trips, I managed to get in there and was stoked on it. I can't remember the name of it. But Is that a Dead Wax? Yeah. That's around the corner there. Never, ever open. Yeah, it's I mean, kind of... Go ahead. It's very like boutique kind of thing. Like it's a, you know, it's a very uh, kind of smaller shop kind of... But it, oh, it was it, great. If, they have a great collection we, for sure. I don't know if we just always played Sundays or something weird, but it was just like... And then all the just the weird little shops where depending on whatever I'm interested in, pocket knives or weird stuff. Um, here's my favorite part. And this I love that cheese pizza y'all have. Yeah. Is I that might em be the, emos. I, I don't know. It's the weird cheese. Provel. Man, I eat it like somebody's trying to steal it from me. <laughs> I am the only person in the band, the bus, and the general. Like there's people even I know from St. Louis that are like no. Yeah. It 
it's uh, people either love it or hate it. I mean, there's it's people like nobody's like, ah, whatever. You know, it's just like the people I uh, love that. You know, I yeah. love it. It's a uh, it's pretty tasty stuff, man. It like it. Uh, there's also there's a place that like um, uh, cold peppers, kind of this, uh, you know, just regular kind of bar uh, diner kind of thing or whatever. I don't know, just whatever. It's got your your uh sports bar kind of thing kind of vibe to it um but like it's got uh they do a like a melted like a dippable provel cheese uh with like uh you with like waffle fries and, st- and that you can dip it in that it's pretty awesome amazing yeah i just i like cheeses i get yeah. or i don't i mean i don't know but that but it's just i'm always like hey my tour manager's like hell no i'm not getting a halt nobody's gonna eat it but you like no 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 and i'm like come on it's like a, it's actually like a, like a bright byproduct of uh, some kind of thing. It's like a it's, mix comb- combination of a couple of cheeses and it's a uh, but, of awesome cheeses. Yeah, That's for just, sure. But yeah, uh, I know that guy, uh, David, uh, whatever barstool sports, kind of, uh, he comes through and he does a lot of pizza reviews type of things. And, yeah. and he came through and he, he didn't, uh, he didn't really get it. Like the cracker, cracker, thin crust and, uh, just, thing, tangy sauce. And yeah, I mean, it just, and again, it's different than all these other, you know, but I'm just like, it's just maligned. Like you said, yeah. I mean, it's like people like me, I'm like, I think it's great. If it's warm, we've got some sauce, yeah. a little kick and I'm not the biggest cracker thin crust, but, some days I alternate, but, but yeah, I'm like, man, this is delicious. It's that weird sure. consistency. Yep. There's people that are like, I'd rather you spoon feed me vomit than eat that pizza. <laughs> it's like, wow, that's so, you know, I, so. I saw a good video. Um, Jim Gaffigan came to town and I uh, was performing at uh, Peabody opera house or one of our theaters here and uh and he so he shot this video like backstage and and i, I guess i don't know if he was doing it in, like every city or some of the bigger ones or whatever he was doing but he had he asked like for some of our most famous items uh yeah. as, as far as st louis and he so he tried the pizza the emos pizza he uh he got gooey butter cake which we're kind of known for here uh is like one of the only places that serves gooey butter cake and this uh and we're also known for uh toasted raviolis which is like just deep fried pasta yeah no i mean i've had toast yeah toasted raviolis are like every weirdo like we got a garibaldi's that has it and i think yeah you know, endless pasta bowl people have it some it might not be as good as that one but i'll but, uh, tear but, up some go ahead when people come to st louis like and they some of these things they've never you know heard of or seen or anything and they so it's uh you know it's interesting when they get to try our emos pizza or something for the first time or what did you call that gooey gooey butter cake yeah that's a it's basically just pure sugar yeah wouldn't you i'm texting my st louis that, that there you go just I'm like gooey butter cake why did you never explain gooey, <laughs> but like i feel like that was a it's, huge misstep not yeah about well gooey butter you, and cake all in one sentence yeah there you go man next time you're in town i'll, well, I'll make sure to bring you some Yes. Uh, but uh, yeah, man. Again, uh, the new record. I want to play another tune from this one, man. This is another uh, again you, the, a newer single that you guys leaked out. Um, and uh, this is "Outrun the Moon." Sometime after midnight 
and another uh really just feel good song man it was like uh i had a lot of fun with this listening i but i think the part that uh intrigues me the most i, I like uh ben's lyrics and things but i like uh like about three minutes in when that synthesizer kicks in yeah and then and then goes into the guitar solo it's real funny because it's not it, it's a synthesizer i guess but it's a a clav clav like stevie okay. wonder like so it's not even really a synthesizer All right he's not playing a real clav but that's the whole like it's real funky yeah because it's stevie like some some superstition so it's like a 60s 70s you know if you listen to stiff records kind of thing but there's so many synthesizers on that record and that clav makes such a weird noise that a lot of people are going to be like womp, 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 womp. it's going to sound synthy but it's actually okay the farthest away from it's like elvis costello and yeah stuff so well it's just kind of it's just weird because like i mean i and again i love it but it's like it's like uh you know, the song is just kind of grooving along. And like I said, three minutes, like it's a complete right turn, you know, like it's just like a totally different sound comes in. And then, uh, and then, uh, and like I said, like it leads into guitar solo there. And it was like, I, and as you're saying that Ben's all about these, these eighties, uh, you know, Eagle solo projects kind of thing. Like that's kind of definitely where it took my mind is like this kind of eighties feel to it and stuff. Yeah. It's, uh, he had a lot of time in Ohio to write a lot of or flush out a lot of demos so there was a lot of like for me it was like how about i play this he'd be like yeah let's look at the demo so a lot of this stuff i was playing some we'll say variation or sometimes note for note of something that he might have wanted to put there but like those solos i spent 30 minutes just trying to find the first like part of that solo because i had all these edgy and, and a lot of the songs when you hear them there's these crazy like hair metal solos in them, which are fun. I love a hair metal solo, but the whole song sounds like the cure or it sounds like some kind of synthy indie rock. So I was trying to do some edgy, you know, pill kind of, you know, post punk. And he's just like, no, no, no. I want like Wah! journey, you know, and I'm all like, Oh, I would have never in the time of my life put those, you know? So, yeah, I mean, that's the thing is, yeah, it's, uh, and that solo in that Outrun the Moon is definitely, and that's my secret lick. It works for everything. You, if you listen to that, do, 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 which sounds like you belong to the city, I use that in everything. Like, you can go back <laughs> in some form or fashion. It's on at least half or three quarters of every Lucera record ever. Luther Dickinson from uh, North Mississippi All Stars and all that. He called it the Jimi Hendrix, or no, not Jimi, the Almond Brothers. So you do a scale, which is like do, 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 da, 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 da. It's like one, four, one, three, one, three, one, three, one, four, one, four. But you go on that B string, you go one, two, four. So it's do, 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 do. And kind of gives it a jazzy thing. And I use, I mean, Tears don't matter much. It's me going da na 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 na. It's the same lick, just backwards. As is that me or you? That was me. I think that time something. Okay. Sometimes Some, I get bouncy. Right. Um, but yeah. So that's the humor in it. Is is with all that chord structure he created. Do, 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 do. It's just you belong to the city. Like I don't think we're gonna get sued, but when you hear it, you're like, that's you belong to the city. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But yeah, man, this uh, this is a fun one, and I uh, again, I I'm excited about the new album. I can't wait to hear what else you guys uh, cooked up. Uh, this uh, it's gonna be interesting. We released all the not all the I'm not gonna say normal songs, but there's some cinematic. There's some different there's, there's some different stuff on there, which is gonna yeah. be interesting for when people finally start to get into it. Is your uh, is your favorite still to be released or do, do you, uh, for this, uh, for this record or. And this is the fun part too, is I don't like you were talking about the live show. I have, I have to go back and listen to the record and learn my parts again and kind of brush up. Cause I've just been ignoring it, but I won't listen to that record ever again. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like I don't go back and listen to them, but it'll enter 
a lexicon, if nothing else, of the live set. And so that's what it's going to be curious for me is we'll play every song for a year. Mm -hmm. And then like with all the other ones, it's like, what's, what falls out of rotation and what, you know, like what are going to be the, I have a feeling outrun the moon is going to be a constant for us and some stuff, but um, yeah. So I don't necessarily ever have favorite songs. Sure. A, like everybody's like for years, people are like, Oh, what's your favorite song to play? And I'm all like, all of them. Uh, yeah. I don't, you sure. know, like, um, but I see it as like, we play 25 songs and it's almost like a classical music, like a, so for me, it's like, all right, there's ebb and flow. And at the mm-hmm. end of the night, it's like, did we play well? Did we fall apart in the middle? Did we bring it back? And so, um, I don't know. The punk rock kid in me likes to just bash out. I like the fun ones where you can just bash them out and everybody's cheering along and you don't have to think about it. Yeah. But in the last few records, there's a lot of like, ooh, Brian's got to concentrate because there's a lot of moving parts. <laughs> and so. Um, Is it uh, crazy for you to think about? I mean, you mentioned uh, 23 years and, uh, but like, you know, stuff like, uh nights like these and what you know whatever like songs have been around for 20 plus years that like oh it's nuts that it's, people still want to hear and want to sing along to and i mean they don't I, I think that's the humorous part as well is we have a solid group of people that are excited about new lucero music but we have a larger fan like we're old enough now that like i said like we're not an oldies band necessarily but you know like if we were more famous or less famous, I don't know how, you know, like what Americana cruise would we be on? You know, like we did the, what we call the block party two nights in the row. And we did everybody's the top 15 or whatever requests, all old stuff. Yeah. You know, but then the next night we did nobody's darlings and everybody lost their minds. And it's funny because it's old enough that when that record came out, people hated that record. They were like, sounds like unfinished demos or this record is lacking production. Like, and now it's everybody like, but yeah, like we could go on tour and play the first four records every night and never write a new album again. And probably, you know, it's soul sucking to even think about doing that, but <laughs> do you know what I mean? But that's the interesting part is, yeah, we're doing it. Now I guess talking about it earlier, like there's people that are like, here's the funny part. So I'm at the coffee shop. This is two years ago, whatever. And these kids were riding their bikes around. They were 18, 19. They were riding from city to city and then doing Habitat for Humanity in each city. Number one, you build a house for a week. My ass is tired. But then they get on a bicycle and pedal to the next city. That's lunacy. Right. you know. But I had just gotten Jasper. He was on my middle dog. And this girl's like, oh, I love your dog. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm, what do you do? And I was like, I play in this band. Comes up, because I don't generally try to be like, hey, Lucero. I try to just like, yeah. And when it came up, she's like, oh, my God. You're my dad's favorite band. <laughs> and it's funny, because if we wouldn't. She was 18. We wouldn't. Why would we be her favorite band? Right. You know? But it's awesome to think that, we, you know, who knows when her dad discovered it, but she grew up listening to us. Like we grew up listening to our parents listen to the Beatles or, or whatever parents right. listen to disco. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, yeah, that's the kind of thing that we're so forward thinking. I post a bunch of old stuff, you know, but as a whole, it is, it's just like, that was 23 years ago you know what i mean like that Mm -hmm. wasn't high school or anything but basically that was yeah like i don't i'm yeah i've come to a standstill verbally about it but yes it is weird to think that you know certain albums and songs for people are decades old yeah i was just uh i don't know man it's it's really just neat to think about that that people would still you know give a shit about these songs for that long, you know, that they, and I think the songs are good, but we've also had a slow, how would we say this? I think that's the other joke is like, this record's going to come out. Everybody's like, Oh, it's going to be huge. You guys are finally going to break. You're going to be like famous. Right. Right. No, we're not. 
but thank you. Because every right. record they're in like this is the record, this is the record, and you're like, maybe. And lately it's just like, no, we just put out records and tour. Yeah. But I feel like if we'd have blown up, I don't say like Kings of Leon and whatever, there was some moment when we possibly, you know, like if we'd have blown up, we might not be a band anymore. You know, like we've always been this maintain this like always working, always try, you know, like and so I think that's part of it. There's a slow build. Yeah. You know, and just one day it's going to be like, you guys are the, you know, godfathers of the movement. And you're like, what? No, 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 no. And then you're like, oh, crap. We have been doing this for 30 years, <laughs> you know? So it is, I think uh, that's one of the interesting things is we went from being not considered to being, we've been around so long. We just assume we're going to be here forever. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Not taken for a lot of times. I think we're taken for granted, not in a bad way, but just like we've been a constant for so long that yeah, it's like I'm not gonna go see them. They play 200 shows a year. I'll see them, you know, in three months or something. Right. So um, yeah, I uh, I uh, I was man. That was it was fun too uh, when I was listening. You know, speaking of like um, some of the other bands and uh, like. When I listen to this on Spotify, it kicks up after it played through. It kind of starts kicking up some other suggested. And I found it interesting. Like, it was uh, some of your, like, peers and stuff they were playing with, like, Ryan Bingham, Reckless Kelly, James McMurtry, Jason Isbell. I mean, like. Like, James McMurtry is like, is he even still alive? He's like a thousand years old. (laughs) He's an amazing songwriter. but But it's just like, that's hilarious because that skews so far to the other like age. Like, yeah. like he's old compared to me and I'm almost 50, you know, like <laughs> but it was just a lot of fun. Like, I mean, that was a great mix of music came afterwards too, but I like, guess just, but I feel like, uh, you know, Lucero's just salad, man. It's just like the, all these records are so good. And the, the Ben's lyrics, uh, he's, he's just got a, a, he's a fantastic songwriter. And, um, that some of, uh, I like the story he's telling, but like some of it is just like, you know, just real heartfelt lyrics that uh, a lot of people, especially Midwest here, that we can we connect to That's these the stories. The early days, that was always the big issue. It was like he couldn't write about it if it didn't happen. So, mm-hmm. of course, there's going to be a, like, he drove past that woman's house three or four times. She saw him. Yeah. I was there when he was on the floor going, just step over me. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, that was not as cool as the song implies, you know? <laughs> um <laughs> And, um, yeah, I feel like that particular night we had just bum rushed some girl sleepover, you know, with a bunch of people like that we might've had interest in like holding hands with, but, um, and we were drinking gin and juice, like a mix, like a weird Snoop Dogg brand. Like it was just something <laughs> garbagey and he wasn't a drinker. He used to, he was never a drinker. He's He's not new anymore. Obviously, he's fucking professional, but he did not drink forever. When the band started, he was Pop Tarts, grilled cheeses, and Coca Colas. And I was just like, oh, I'll drink all the alcohol. <laughs> I don't care what it is. But yeah. And so that was like a weird, yeah. But it was just funny because it was some girl's house and he was just mm-hmm. passed out on the floor. Yeah. And that song <laughs> sounds all like, oh, mm, you're like, Oh no. The real life is never as cool as the stories they imply. Like so. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's the kind of thing is as he's gotten older, he'll start like trying to be a more narrative, I guess. I guess it's always narrative, but not his narrative. So he's mm-hmm. been exploring, you know, trying to write that was for bike riders. That wasn't about him. That whole Cormac McCarthy thing. He just read the book, put it to music. Yeah. You know? And so I, that's a go ahead. I heard uh uh loving today and uh you know I know he recently married and everything and that one that was one that like really kind of struck me uh, you know it was really I don't know just it's a great song again like it's but I can I don't know exactly if that's what he was writing about but I feel like well, he's you know, writing it for the movie. Yeah. And I think it might have ended up in the credits maybe like the joke with that, not the loving, but when his brother started making movies, 
we were doing all the music mm-hmm. like from college the college movie like you know but as yeah. his brother got more famous our songs slowly got went from like up front down to like post credits or you know or something because his brother's working on these like bazillion dollar things and they're like who do you want to do this we need somebody famous you know like doing this and it's just so so it's interesting you know so it's an interesting because i think they tried to get somebody that i don't remember his name but they were going to try to get somebody else to do loving for the movie mm-hmm. like somebody more like an r&b guy or something and that guy was just like why he sings it just it's his song oh. kind of thing but um but yeah, that's the whole, like a lot of those songs, he'll write them for a certain situation, but they work for multiple situations. That's the beauty of yeah. it. Yeah. So. Oh yeah. That's I mean. Like, that's what I thought was great. Like I, I, I totally connected to my own situation with my wife and like, yeah. you know, just like these are, sounds like somebody's like wedding vows almost or something, you know, it's like yeah. a, it's a, it was a beautiful song. Um, but yeah, man, I, uh, you mentioned, uh, the start of the show, uh, working on a synthesizer, playing some beats, uh, uh, is, is that, the- <laughs> yeah, I, um, uh, I've recorded is- my first record. I just might not put it out now. Um, okay. I don't know. I, the humor in it is, is since this, in this conversation, hence is not the correct use of that word. Um, I'm not a lyric guy. I have no concept what Ben's over there singing about. Right. I'm in an instrumental duo, practically, you know? Um, And so I love writing poetry and writing, and I love playing music. I don't do the two together. So I've been, I made this kind of, it's like, for me, it was like old Memphis soul, like Booker T and Willie Mitchell, like dance, like the, you know, Green Onions but I was putting trap drums on them. So I'm right. using live drums. And then some of them sound like Lucera. Some of them sound like old new order, but yeah, it was, I've got a nine song, 30 minute record. And, uh, I might just throw it on. I have a band camp. Actually not. A, I do have a band camp, but I have a, not a Spotify. The other thing besides band camp, people put SoundCloud. Those, SoundCloud. There it is. I have a SoundCloud. And I might just throw it up there for fun, but I, uh, while I was making that one, I was joking around, messing with stuff, and I accidentally made, excuse me, that was disgusting. Um, <laughs> a, I made a Halloween imaginary soundtrack to a to a horror movie. Okay, and it's kind of John Carpenter meets trap music, like Ghetto Boys. So it's, um, and I Mad. put that up on it's on my sound uh, SoundCloud. I'll definitely and check that out. It sounds like a lot of fun. It's the songs can be repetitive because there are like there's an element of the drum machine. I don't they're a little chopped up here and there, but they're not necessarily you drive around and listen to the whole thing. You're not sitting down going, Oh, I think I'm gonna listen to this four minute instrumental you know, I will, but a lot of people want you know a story to be told or something. Yeah. But yeah, I um but yeah, so I just um I got this micro core, I got all this stuff. So I'll build some track on a drum machine and I'm in the full, like, I want to bust out windows. The bass is correct. Like my friend that helps me mix, he's like, you know, they'll never be able like, this is insane. I'm like, yeah, I stacked like eight low end bass drums and then put a sub. So it's like, like you can't even hear it on your phone. Like you put in headphones, you're like, holy shit. Or, you know, like, and that's the beauty of it. I'll have an acoustic guitar doing something, a little, like, kind of organ sun sound, but it's like, it's all pretty, but then it has this low end, just boom. So it's a learning thing, but I'm getting to just do, I don't really listen to anything that I would, like, play. You know what I mean? Like, that's the humor in it. Like, I did a podcast called The Tone Mob. And uh, this kid Blake from Portland, I believe, and uh, he, uh, we were talking about it. How it's funny he's records stuff, but he listens to like Lucero, alt country, a lot of real crazy metal. But he's making all these like smooth jazz or kind of low key stuff. I'm like, man, you're just making. You don't have to play what you listen to necessarily. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's um, it's just fun. It's just, but yeah, I am. Um, 
Are you Edible like exploration uh, society is what I'm calling it. V S. Right. And um I'll send you a link to the um the trap record. I'm trying to get I gotta get wave files before I can put up the the first record. But okay. I, I was gonna put it up on iTunes and be like solo record, da da da. And everybody heard it, they were like, Well, those are cute little soundscapes. And it was just like, <laughs> fuck off. If they don't have words, they're not a song, you know, kind of thing. I get it. You know. Um Are you are you like looking to uh like collaborate and, and like you know put these beats out there for like rappers or that MCs would be or awesome. Yeah. But I'm looking to what I'm looking for, honestly, and like Roy would probably get involved and Rick maybe. Um I'm looking for a new like it's weird. Like, how old are you? I'm 35. Yeah, you're getting up there. I mean, I'm not saying you're <laughs> old, but no, no, I'm just saying you're not like like you know how you meet that crew you hang out with like post high school or college right it's harder the older you get it's harder to find a group of people oh yeah to do stuff and so yeah it's like i have just you know i bought a record today or it came in the mail and it was like it's cuban music from 72 to 82 in new york spe specifically from this one studio but so it's you know kind of afro beat i'm listening to all this kind of dub stuff and king tubby i still like i like john fahey for me americana is john fahey he's the greatest you know, just that father of american primitive guitar i'm still at damn near 50 discovering so much new stuff and hearing all these sounds they're not lucero sounds mm -hmm. you know like and so yeah that's the kind of joke is like yeah like we're from memphis al capone Yo Gotti, there's all kinds of, you know, three, six mafia, but there's a hundred kids on the street that I could probably be like, like DJ from that Craig Brewer movie, you know, where he's the beat making guy or whatever. <laughs> the irony is some face tatted 50 year olds in his living room while his kids in another room making, you know, booty bass music or whatever. <laughs> but yeah, for me, I love Lucero. It's what I do. I love it. We love playing music together. Even Ben is making, he's got weird stuff. And Roy's yeah. always done his electronic music. John C plays with everybody. But there's just an interesting, like, I don't know what the sound is in my head yet or to get it out. But yeah, like, yeah. I would love to find, that's just trying to find collaborators that sure don't want to be like, oh, I love Lucero. And it's like, that's great. This isn't Lucero. I want to do something <laughs> completely different. No, we're not yeah. going to go on tour. No, you're not going to be famous. I just want to drink coffee. You can have your beer or whatever. We make music and weirdo or not weirdo or whatever. Yeah. But yeah. That's yes. Ideally I would love to be like, Oh, you like that rapper guy? I've got a 50 of them at the house, you mm -hmm. know? And I've, um, I've got a, a buddy, Antonio. He's, uh, you know, here locally in St. Louis, and uh, one of my favorites goes by uh, ATG Antonio the Great, and uh, just he's but he's always like, you know, that's as as him as an artist, he's always looking for new new sounds to inspire him to want to write. Yeah. So like, um, so I, I might uh, send him your link too to maybe he'll uh, want to yeah pur purchase no, a beat from me or something. That would be you know, and that's the thing is, I'm horrible at monetizing things. I just love, I'd be like, take them all. And everybody, yeah. I got people that are like, no, Brian, stop. <laughs> Sell them to, you know, like quit being poor and creative, you know? <laughs> and so, um, but yeah, that's the whole beauty of it is, is for 22 years, I hate recording. I've never, I'm one take Venable. Let's get the fuck out of the studio back on the road. And now all of a sudden it's just like, Ooh, let's do this and that. And like, what happens if we run a compressor through the drum mic and, live drums or what's and i'm i've wasted i don't really regret much of anything but i've been in some of the best studios with some of the most amazing producers in the world in the corner drunk or down the street on the phone yeah, i should have been like what's that do what's that yeah. do? what's that do because now i'm all like mother of fucks <laughs> <laughs> but again i've treated it like punk rock i don't know how to do it you just do it yeah and Somehow you probably come up with some kind of new, you know, you take your limitations sure. and you make them prevalent, I guess. Yeah. I, it's, uh, I'm, I've connect a lot because like, 
you know, even me doing the show, I really had no desire to do anything radio related or, you know, I just a big fan of music and I wanted to start trying to shine a light on friends, some friends of mine doing it. And then I, but I found, I discovered that I, I have a real passion for this, yeah. uh, doing this podcast. And so like, it's kind of fun when, you know, you discover something new that you like and like, Hey, I'm going to run with this thing. And like, you, you want to learn as much as you can, why you can. And that's the beauty so, of it. It's like, yeah, yeah. It's out there. I want, I want to learn Spanish, fix up my house and sell it. And at 60, move to South America and grow coffee and just paint on a mountain. You know, that's plan a right now, Yeah, but there'll be a hundred plan A's in the next 10 years. Cause that's yeah. the joke too, is everybody's like, you talk so much and you tell all these crazy stories. You should do a podcast. I was like, that sounds exhausting. <laughs> I see. I know a lot of these people do these podcasts. They work real hard to make these not just like hit play and chatter. Yeah. They're all like, uh, that sounds like, yeah. you know. Uh, I mean, it, it is whatever you make it. I mean, you can. I know. Uh, I know. Well, I'm just saying, yeah. I have a bad habit of getting all in. If you're going to get wet, sure. you might as well go swimming. Yeah. And that's why I have like, I'm a dilettante for sure. I have a hundred hobbies and I'm only half assed at all of them. <laughs> yeah. You know? So, um, <laughs> Why, uh, while I got you here, I wanted to talk, uh, a little, uh, tattooing. Ooh. I know, uh, you, uh, you obviously are a fan, uh, yourself and, uh, and what, uh, t what, 2018 you went into business. Yeah. Right? Um, me and some friends, um, it's, you know, it's funny. Like my business partner, Brent is the tattoo. It's his shop. Let's okay. just be honest. He lives there. He breathes it. He, you know, um, and Derek and Meredith, they were, the, they're the brains, <laughs> some, you know, like they know how to run a bit, not run a business, but they're like, oh, this is how you set up stuff. And Brent's day to day. I'm the guy that's, and I'm real bad at my job. I'm supposed to be on the internet, like shirt off going, woo, love some <laughs> tattoos. And I do occasionally, I've gotten out of the habit and I need to get back into the habit, but we're booming right now. It's, uh, yeah, we picked up three people from a different shop that, it didn't shut down, but there was some kind of wackiness involving COVID and they were like three of the best tattooers in the city and they showed up. So it's just like, oof. Like, so it's booming. Yeah. yeah. At some when, point, go ahead. When did you get into uh, like as the art form? I mean, again, you know, there's a point where punk rock and you're like, at some point you're like, Ooh, I'll get a tattoo or something. And I mean, I had one or two, but really, Probably in 2010, 11, our tour manager, Jimmy Perlman, he tattoos and he knows everybody. And it got to the point where, and again, I guess I got some while I was drinking too, but there was, I wanted to get tattooed. Like I'm probably 80% covered. I'm kind of done just because I don't want it to be, it's all like armpits and buttholes at this point. It's just like, ugh. I just don't care. You know, like I, I'm, I'm tough enough. I'm not that tough, I guess. But, um, but yeah, so for me, we'd get into town and he'd be like, I'd, I'll go get tattooed in the morning. I'll go get tattooed. At, I've been tattooed in the dressing room a hundred times. You know, yeah. it's like, take me to go get tattooed. My record was 12 and eight weeks. And my body wow. was, I had to take a Z pack. My body was just like, what the, f did you fall down a hill for the last eight weeks? What the <laughs> hell? You know? And so, but part of it is, it's the same as anything. If you really get into it, especially traditional, there's a whole culture and books and, you know, there's a history and you're like, fuck, you're a part of something, you know, like tattooing in general, because you're an oddball and I don't care. I mean, they're cool now, but it's like my hands and my neck are tattooed. People think I just got out of prison, you know, like I'm either a millionaire or I'm going to rob you because that's the only two ways they can see it. Normal people right. don't get tattooed in those places but but yeah just talking to brent a lot and that's the thing is like you know it's the lucero tattoo shop but really it's bluff city you know i'm sure it doesn't hurt that the guy from lucero owns it but yeah you know we were having I, a few guest artists come through it was pretty cool covid kind of you know took that out but at some point we'll get back and people will travel and then i'll call all my friends and be like hey come do a weekend and It'll be awesome. Yeah. My wife, uh, she just fit, wrapped up uh, a sleeve. She, uh, she She's a, uh, it's all Jurassic Park themed. Wow. Yeah. And uh, it's very cool. Like, 
I, when she first said the idea, I was like, ah, I don't know. I mean, we like, yeah, sure. I like Jurassic Park. I don't I mean, know. I love like, the pinball, but yeah. yeah. No, like, <laughs> but is she, uh, is Jeff she, Goldblum on your wife's arm? <laughs> no, no, Jeff Goldblum. What? But, That's the no. best part of Jurassic Park. <laughs> uh, she, it's, it's, she got the dinosaur. She's, oh, she likes dinosaurs a lot. So she got, uh, but she's got like the on the right on the top of the bicep, uh, like the the gate, uh, and then T Rex coming in. She's got the Jeep there. She's got uh, uh, several dinosaurs. She's got like the egg. She's got the amber. She's got a uh, on the inside of her wrist is the can of Barbasol. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, so she's got like a little little references like that too yeah. in there. And like, well, that's but, been the uh, best part about it is like seeing everybody's ideas or whatever. But it's also, I have had to like check myself because people come in they get so they're like just watching somebody get so like it's got to have meaning or what am i again i'm so nervous you know and at this point brent's got new ink he needs to try i'm all like hey just do something <laughs> like yeah. i don't know you know like i don't and so i have to realize that i'm well past caring <laughs> and i have to be aware of other people that this is one of a big like they're altering their body and i'm all like well i'm a little light in the game to worry about you know but yeah they come in and they just stress it like is it too big is it too little i was like it doesn't matter you're gonna get 16 around it at some point <laughs> they yeah. might not that might be you know and so that's been the funnest part is trying to be like yeah you know whereas i'm just like just get whatever man you know like <laughs> Go, we have a get what you get machine, like just a gumball machine. And you just put, we have quarters, but you pay 50 or $60 and you crank it. And whatever it is you get, it's like $20 to roll again extra or something if you don't like it. But it's all pretty cool stuff. But yeah, like there's people that it blows their mind. They're like, you, you just pick some random thing and get a tattooed on your body. And you're like, yes, 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 you do. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, so yeah, I was collecting books. I was hanging out meeting people um it just kind of went from there to where i'm gonna get licensed and do l stars um and maybe some jerry flash at some point just for you know that would be something i can go in and be like hey the guitars from your favorite bands doing these four tattoos and maybe yeah. pick up some drum up some business or something well, that's what i was kind of wondering like you know obviously if you you know your your arts right you now with the art uh your your painting and things i was wondering if you had ever if you drew for I tattoos can't get or to the health department to save yeah. my life either i'm on tour covid i got bronchitis during the i didn't get covid i sure as fuck got bronchitis for eight weeks thought i was gonna die yeah and so this thing only happens like every it's like four or five times a year all through the state. So it'll be in Memphis, might be in Jackson, might be like you might have to drive to Nashville, but it's like, I've never, I just got to be healthy and in town and I'll drive and go get my uh, bloodborne pathogen. And then Brent will just, uh, um, crap, tutor me or whatever. He'll sign the form. And then, yeah, after a year, I'll just be a licensed tattooer mm -hmm. and everything. But it's just usually I'm out of town. If I'm in town, I got the kid. Um, and then about the time I get excited about it, yeah, it's like, okay, I'm going to do this. Then it's like pandemic. We're shutting everything down. Yeah. And, and then I was like, I'm in town. I'm healthy. Da, 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 da. And then sure as shit, I can't breathe or I can't, you know, kind of thing. So at some point, I will get to the health department. And get the form I need to test, take the test, which is real easy. Like restaurant people and nurses and tattooers have to take it kind of thing. Okay. And so, but yeah, that's, and again, I don't necessarily think I'll be a tattooer, but I'll probably pick like a rose, a anchor, something from the Jerry book. I'll do an L star and maybe I'll do one of my little kind of painting guys. Yeah. And, um, and just be like, here's the five things I do. 80 it's 100 bucks 80 dollars for the tattoo plus 20 dollars for a tip kind of thing or just you know like i said it's more of a because right now if i give you an l star i have a whole speech where it's like you are aware that i'm not a tattooer i'm a guitar player in a band that you like you're getting a tattoo of a band that you like from the you know like so this is definitely 
you know, and then I draw the star out and I do right. And then the freehand, the L and I'm always like, this could go either way. It could be an L or an apostrophe. We never know, <laughs> you know? So I have this whole spiel. I've probably done just at a hundred of them. Right. And so, um, yeah, it started out as just kind of a tattoo shop. Like the guy give me a tattoo and then I'd give them an L star, kind of a party tat. And then people get real nerd. Like they're like, are you going to be in town? Are you going to be tattooing in Dallas? And I'm all like, I don't tattoo. I will not be just tattooing. <laughs> you know, if you're there and I happen to be doing some, you might get in on it, but I do not take appointments, mm-hmm. you know, like that kind of thing. So, so no, I don't no. know. It's neat. It's just another, again, I like the history. I like the culture. Yeah. I like being a part of something and I might be more of a part of it. We'll see. Sure. I, uh, I'm, you know, I'm still fairly new to the whole world of it, uh, which is, uh, I, I watch it, that, uh, Ink Master show. I mean, obviously it's, it's obviously for just for entertainment, it's silly. Yeah. Uh, but it's, uh, there's, I do learn a lot about the, the culture and the history of tattooing and stuff through that show. And, uh, which is ironic know, because a lot of people were like, fuck you, Oliver. It's our culture. Quit giving it to the mainstream. Like, yeah. there's a lot, you know, it's amazing because you do learn a lot. Yeah. But it has also made everybody a Reddit expert when they go into the tattoo shops. Are you sure. going to use a seven or a 10? It's like, I don't fucking know. <laughs> do you know what a seven or a 10? You know, like, yeah. But, but it's neat. I, it's, yeah. No, I, I agree. I just like, but there's a lot of like stuff I didn't, had no idea. Just like, can I, but I like to learn. So, yeah. uh, but that's where it kind of started with that show, watching that and like kind of learning a little bit just, but uh, I have friends uh, locally that, you know, are very successful in the, in the business. Oh, you and, got one uh, of the greatest, and, you got a couple actually, but you got um, Trader Bob's. Is that? Yeah. Um, yeah. That's one of the best shops in the country. Yeah. They've been uh, forever there. You know, yeah. um, uh, I got a, uh, buddy, uh, he lives out in uh, Troy, Missouri. Uh, uh, Dave Canoy has got a shop called Ink Spot yeah. out there, and, and uh, he does a lot of great work and and worked on all kinds of um, you know incredible people. And uh, but just uh, um, and he he uh, actually went out recently. They did a show called uh, they went. I guess it was all self produced kind of thing. It's called it Tattoos and Turnpikes, and they went out and like visit a couple of shops and uh kind of trying to do their own like reality tv but like kind of showing the more of the of the real reality of what these tattoo shops are like instead of like what ink master puts out yeah. there and and some of the other shows and stuff so um trying to sh- put more of it the not the the drama the hollywood uh you know filter yeah, and on again it. i mean i don't think anybody knew from you know having talked to oliver they were like well let's just see if what happens and it's like yeah. At this point, you can put a competition show about ballerinas and it's probably going to have four seasons. People yeah. love to have the like, and then like I said, the producers, and you see it more with Oliver, like they'll keep a really bad person longer just because they talk shit. Like it, they're looking to put butts in the seats, not necessarily yeah, not, have yeah. the, you know, Agreed. so, so yeah, yeah, so it's cool. And um, I don't know, there's a, you can find it floating around on the internet, but it's called Stony Knows Best. Um, you should watch that because that's badass. Okay. He's like a tattoo. It's made in the 70s. And it's more of a folk film at this point. But it's a uh, Stony is this like kind of he was like a in the in the traveling carnival, his hands kind of messed up, but he was all he's old in this thing in the 70s. But he was like it's just an amazing, it's him in his shop and talking and telling tattoo stories. And um, yeah, it's like a a weird late seventies, you'd see it on PBS or something. And so, okay. but it's Stoney's Stony knows best. And it's just culturally and all that kind of stuff. You're like, Oh, this is really kind of cool. So you get to see like a, and yeah, like historically accurate, not very glamorous at all. And he's talking and he's hilarious. And he tells good stories and stuff. Yeah. I'll definitely have to pull it up see if I can yeah. find it. Um, uh, well, Brian, this has been uh, super cool, man. I'm really uh, so, so glad we were able to sit down and do this tonight, man. I've been cracking up all night. Uh, so thank you for sharing some some fun stories with me and taking some time, man. Uh, again, uh, uh, you can find all things Lucero at uh, luceromusic.com. Follow along on Facebook and Instagram and yeah. and all that. Um the uh the record uh when you found me due out january 29th 21 
uh is, is this uh uh like vinyl i'm sure all that kind of stuff is it coming out on yeah, yeah vinyl no, the stuff vinyl, like people online have been getting their vinyl pre-orders okay like, with the different colors and everything but yeah it's uh we didn't do cassettes or anything, which yeah. people seem to be doing those. But, um, but yeah, it's CD, uh, vinyl, iTunes, Spotify, wherever you get music from, we're there. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. That uh, I've been. That's vinyl's been. Uh, I've been most of the pe- bands that I get into. A lot of them are you know bringing trying to do vinyl when possible, Man. and like uh, so it's cool to uh continue to add to my collection uh of records and stuff so it's it's always fun to to see your friends on a, on a on a big uh, vinyl record yeah no no i have a whole section that's just people i know or yeah tour vinyl i don't even it doesn't have a real name but it's like i just keep it all together so that's pretty yeah. cool yeah definitely uh well man um again i'm pumped to hear the rest of this record and uh and see you guys on the road hopefully we will we'll be hitting some stages this summer and stuff man, and uh fingers crossed like i said i our next show in real life is at the caverns on march 26th in uh manchester tennessee and it's social distance it's a big field it should be fine and I'm just fingers crawling. We had to move the Ryman again to September. So it's been moved like three times. But yeah, I don't believe I'm playing a show until I'm there and I've already played the show. Like at this point, it's just, I'm all like, I know we're going to do it, but I'm all like, who knows? You know, like, mm-hmm. but I am so ready to get back on the bus and just go out and see the world and play music. So yeah yeah man it uh you know just just like you guys it's a big part of my life too uh being yeah. being in the in the crowd and uh i you know i know there's a bunch of us obviously where everybody's uh itching to get back in there oh, and uh man. I just, so it yeah it's uh i was good for the first nine to ten months the last four weeks when i see those people they're like day 12 i was like "Ooh, you're in for a lot you're gonna be sad but yeah like about three, four weeks ago, I was just like, all right, I've officially losing my mind. I need to go on tour. Yeah. So the vacation cool. is over. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. All right on, Brian. Uh, yeah. well, thank you. Thank you, brother. This was uh, so cool, man. Yeah, no, and this is awesome. Ho- hopefully, uh, like I said, hopefully I'll we'll get to hang out uh, here soon in St. Louis and enjoy some gooey butter cake and Emos pizza and have a good time. I'm waiting to hear back. I'm going to have to Google this when we get done. There you go. See this gooey cake. <laughs> right on, man. Well, thank Hell you. Yeah. And uh, I'll see you soon, buddy. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye.